As you approach the chapel, gargoyles loom overhead on high plinths, and a great marble statue stands alone above an ornate arched doorway, flanked by two aged bronze horse heads riddled with verdigris. Hi guys, welcome to the archive. This week I've got another easy build for you to do. You can have it done completely within a day and it gives you a lovely modular piece that you can use to add a ton of detail to either a dungeon room or a building. It's also really simple to make. It's literally just cutting and sticking bits of foam to the right sizes. The best thing about this build though is it really starts to show the value of these modular pieces. You've already built the stone walls. You don't have to build them over and over and over again, unlike most other projects. And it allows you to build something huge and amazing for very little effort. You literally just have modular add-ons like this that turn basic stone walls into something fantastic. If you need any materials or supplies for this build, you can find everything I use and links on where to get it in my equipment list. Anything you buy through these Amazon links also goes a small way to supporting the costs of the channel without costing you, so please buy it through that if you need something. To get started with this build, grab four pieces of quarter inch thick XPS foam cut down to two and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches, and use the free template you can download from my Patreon in the link below to mark out these arch shapes in each piece and cut them out. You actually get some nice leftover bits from this. If you take the two smallest pieces, you can cut them down by about half an inch and hot glue them together to fit into the shrine as a kind of little modular plinth for the holy symbol to stand on. Make sure you don't cut the red line on the largest piece until after you've finished cutting the main arch out. The red line is more or less there just to show where to cut the final arch bricks. Once you've got them cut out, line them up and cut some brick shapes into the arch areas that show. By lining them up you can make sure all of the arch bricks line up as well, starting with the smaller bricks in the centre and getting progressively bigger and more impressive. Then we can add some brickwork to the front. I ended up doing mine similarly to the rest of the wall to add some consistency between pieces and make it feel like they were part of the same structure. Once I had my bricks, I cut some thin strips and some little weathered chunks depending on how damaged that you want them to look. I then beveled the edges with a ballpoint pen. It can be a good idea here to be gentle and not push too deeply on the arch to make the stonework look a little bit more finely crafted. Once I've beveled, I've just then textured it as stone with some balled up tin foil. I actually found my little cocktail stick ball helpful here in getting into the tight corners. You can make one just by super gluing a small tin foil ball to the end of a cocktail stick. It's really easy and ridiculously useful. Once that was done, all I had to do was hot glue the pieces together. Once you've got that, we can add the details around it. First we'll need some three and a quarter inch high columns, three eighths of an inch on one side by half an inch on the other. I textured this on one side as stone with half inch high blocks and then hot glued it to the sides of the arch. We then need a quarter inch thick flat piece, one inch by three inches big. I cut a three eighths of an inch by one half an inch block out of the corner of that piece on each side and hot glued it to the top. This meant that it would line up with the rest of the structure. I 
and then textured it as inch big slabs, just like a floor tile, with more beveling and tinfoil texturing. Now it's time to add the columns, which I wanted to be four inches high and three quarters of an inch square. I hot glued these into place on a slot on each side. The columns themselves I carved in some half inch high blocks and textured them as stone with tin foil again. Finally, for the top of the columns, I cut a quarter inch thick, one inch square slab to top them off. I also put in a three millimeter neomidium magnet, and check out my equipment list for more information on those, into the top of each column by melting a hole with a hot glue gun nozzle and gluing one in it, holding it with a little tool made from blue tack and a cocktail stick. When compared to the other magnets in my other tiles, which you can see more about in my magnetic building tiles video, I put them in with north facing upwards just to keep some consistency. I then sealed the hole back up with hot glue and flattened it out to paint over. This allows me to use the various holy symbols on these columns at a later date, and almost as importantly, place these symbols anywhere in any of my future systems. I also made some easy evil symbols over the door from some very old Warhammer Chaos bits I had lying around and just hot glued them to an eighth of an inch thick, three quarter inch square of foam, which I cut a quarter of an inch from each corner from to form an octagonal base. I also added a magnet beneath so it would be easy to attach to the top. It's better to do this first so the hot glue gun doesn't interfere with the glue that you've stuck the holy symbol down on top with. I also made some more neutral looking symbols from some old horse heads. I wasn't aiming for these to align with any gods or factions specifically, but a little bit of thinking ahead can give you some great detail on your scene with barely any extra effort each time. Alternatively, you can leave these columns bare or use them as something to sit gargoyles on. Once the columns were in, I added the decorative four crenellations, which were made from a quarter inch thick piece of foam, which I cut to three quarters of an inch by two and a quarter of an inch. I cut two lines in the middle, a quarter inch in each, and detailed half inch bricks into the middle strip. The bottom strip I cut an eighth of an inch strip from to add some more detail into the piece. I tried to keep the bricks here much smaller to show that these are purely decorative. I cut two three eighths of an inch pieces from the top, each of them a half inch from either side, which gave me three half inch top blocks. I left the gap next to the line about an eighth of an inch big to add some edging to the crenellations, which I cut in one eighth of an inch all the way along the top putting diagonal slits into the corners to add to the appearance that these were neat cuts of stone. When it came to beveling the lines, I did it extremely gently, barely even pushing in with the pen, and I chose not to do it at all for the thin edging on the crenellations. This turned out to be a great method to make it look far more decorative and less rugged than some of the other stonework. Finally, I textured the whole thing carefully like stone with tin foil and hot glued the bottom quarter of an inch of it to the front of the arch covering up the flat piece that we added on top.
I also made two similar but smaller pieces, half an inch wide for the sides. Not crucial, but it's a nice little detail. All we need to do now is line up the piece with our door, with a wall above it, and punch in some cocktail stick accessory hooks at a 45 degree angle to hold it in place. You can punch these hooks in about an inch from the bottom of the piece. This piece has a fair amount of weight and will be resting on the floor or another piece, so these hooks don't need to be too tight. If they feel awkward to use, just trim down the sticks to be a bit thinner. If you're enjoying this project, please like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll definitely hear about future videos. Okay, back to the build. Now that piece will work just fine in the interior of a dungeon as an ornate shrine or entrance, but to use it outside we'll need to make a little stair piece. I used a half inch thick piece of 3 inch by 1 and a quarter inch XPS foam to place underneath the main piece. I cut 3 eighths of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch block out of each of the front corners and replaced them with some half inch high 3 quarter inch square blocks to make the columns look like they continue right the way to the floor. I then cut some stairs into the front by cutting eighth of an inch strips in first from the side and then from above. And then finally I cut the back piece into one inch tiles similar to a floor piece and textured the whole thing with tin foil. This is a nice and easy thing to slip under the entrance when attached to a building and doubles as a cool little platform to add some flavour within a dungeon. It's actually kind of perfect for a raised platform to put a throne on. For all the painting here you can use craft acrylic paint. I used some miniature paint that I had on hand for some of the smaller bits rather than grab a whole new bottle of a new colour though. To paint the pieces I gave them a ceiling coat of Mod Podge mixed with tan paint. You can get away with this if you have a forgiving foam colour like grey, yellow, white, even blue might be okay. If you've got pink foam though, you might want to mix in some black instead and then do a layer of tan over the top. I then mixed up some tan and grey to get what is quite possibly my favourite stone colour. If you're looking to make this faster, I would base coat in this colour instead and then just skip to the dry brushing. I painted this on just under a third of the bricks. Don't worry about counting exactly how many, just try to make sure they're scattered around and not next to each other. Then I mixed up some grey with white for this lighter grey, which again I painted on just under a third of the bricks. If you want to make it easier to get into the gaps at the edges carefully with these colours, you can thin it a little with some water without worrying about getting a solid coat. The high points are going to be dry brushed over anyway. Then I just dry brushed the whole thing with tan, using my hand as a quick way to quickly dry out the paint compared to a paper towel, which is something I found to be a bit of a useful trick. Finally I dry brushed again with white, this time trying to keep it in the areas where light would fall and edges that might get scuffed. Don't worry too much about how delicate you have to be here, you can be a bit rougher than me without worrying too much, as long as your paint is dry.
Then finally, I give the whole thing a coat of the ubiquitous black-brown wash that's basically Devlin mud but cheap and for terrain, which I show how to make in my painting stone video. You want to coat this on pretty thick and just use the brush to draw away any areas that pull so much that it would dribble down if you left it. The chaos symbols I painted in a base coat of army painted gun metal over a black primer. I then painted some of the more detailed areas with GW Brass Scorpion. and then give the whole thing a black wash. Finally, I put in some Nylac Oxide into the recesses of the copper colour. If you don't have this stuff, you can thin down a similarly coloured paint for a similar effect. I found it useful to use my thumb to brush away some of the excess paint. The whole symbols I used old school GW Dwarf Bronze, which is a fairly standard bronze. You could probably find a similarly coloured craft paint. I then gave it a black wash. And then I used some Nylac Oxide again in the recesses. Again, using my thumb to wipe away the excess. After that, the whole lot just needs sealing with your spray of choice. I use a water-based spray that you can find in my equipment list, but if you're in the US, there is one called Krylon, which I've linked there for you guys. Neither of these will melt foam though it always pays to be paranoid and test each can on some scrap foam to be sure. When placed outside a building, the piece just hooks onto a modular door tile and leaves a gap to slip the stairs under. It's so easy to attach and adds so much to the detail of a building. It's obviously great to use as a temple entrance or shrine, but it can also be great as an elaborate dungeon door for leading to a boss room or the next big area. As the doors from the modular door tile are, well, modular, you could use an iron door when using it like this, which I'll probably be showing how to make in a future video soon enough. Within a building, it can be used as a shrine with or without the stairs by hooking it onto a wall instead. You can then use one of those leftover arch cutouts to make a little modular platform for the holy symbol to sit on top of. Alternatively, instead of a holy symbol with a little platform, you can put a statue in there, as I did in the opening. Not bad for a one day build but it's gonna combine with some of the pieces from my next few videos, including some from previous videos like these plinths, to make something even more impressive by the end. I hope you got some ideas or inspiration from this video. Modular terrain like this is incredibly flexible and I want to be able to introduce more people to it, especially new players. Let me know what you think about the project in the comments, whether it's good, bad, what you'd change. I love to hear feedback from you guys. If you enjoy these videos that I work on every week and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by joining me in the archive on Patreon. By doing that, you gain access to new episodes up to a week early, a Q&A live stream, which includes some previews every month, and also access to some exclusive printable accessories, like special banners and things that I've put together on Photoshop as a little thank you for those patrons who help me out. There's also some free banners there for everybody, so if you've built some of the banners from my earlier videos and you want something for free, go check it out. And of course, most importantly, you'll be helping me help the community by making more cool modular builds. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with another modular build you'll be able to reuse in a ton of different ways. But until next time, I'll be in the archive.